Hello, my name is JC Slocum and I am the bariatric dietitian that you'll be seeing throughout this process. I'm excited to be a part of this team and I'm excited to work with you moving forward. Today we're going to talk about the pre and post-op diet plan that you'll be following for two weeks before your surgery and also following after your surgery. We'll also talk about some things that you can do now to kind of help with weight loss. So in regards to a timeline, you're going to do two weeks prior to your surgery of clear liquids and protein shakes. It will be followed by two weeks after the surgery of the same diet, clear liquids and protein shakes. You'll come back and see me for a third week, and that's where we'll introduce soft protein foods. We'll replace the protein shakes and add in um, non-starchy vegetables and fruits into weeks four and six. After that, we'll start to advance um, the textures and the variety into your overall diet. So some things that might be helpful to have prior to your surgery could include a notebook or a food log. That way it will help you stay accountable for what you're eating and drinking throughout the day. You might also use a timer and um, throughout this process you will not be able to eat and drink at the same time. And so making sure that you're eating your meal and then waiting about 30 minutes in between eating and drinking before having any type of water or beverage. Um, having smaller plates and utensils will help with portion control. It also helps our eyes to be a little more satisfied when you see something that's full compared to something that's large and empty. Other things you might have would be a food scale. And so with food scales, you can weigh out your protein and see how much protein you're truly getting and what you're eating. So that way when you're tracking your protein later on in this process, it will help you with making sure you are meeting your requirements. So moving forward, we're gonna talk about the vitamins and minerals, the protein shakes, and those clear liquids. So in regards to clear liquids, a clear liquid is anything you hold up to the light and you can see through it. These need to be all liquids and foods at room temperature. There are a few rules you have to follow. They need to be sugar-free, calorie-free, and carbonation-free. Our goal is to get 64 ounces of water per day or fluid that meets that same criteria. So some things that are not gonna be allowed would consist of milk, fruit nectars, tomato juice, or yogurts. Things that would be allowed would consist of, of course, water. You can use a crystal light to enhance the water flavor. You can use decaffeinated coffee or decaffeinated tea. A sugar-free sports drink like a, a Powerade Zero, a Propel, or a Gatorade Zero. You could also have a sugar-free Jello, sugar-free Popsicle, or a fat-free broth. In addition to the clear liquids, you'll also be drinking protein shakes. Think of these as your meal replacement. So depending on what protein shake you go with will depend on how many you are going to drink. Our goal is to get 60 to 80 grams of protein per day. Our rule here is that it needs to have more than 20 grams of protein and less than 10 grams of carbohydrates. The most common protein shakes that we normally drink is the Premier Protein. And so with this one, it has 30 grams of protein and only five grams of carbohydrates. So if your goal is to get 60 grams, you'll drink two of these a day. Other protein shakes that are pretty common we see is the Ensure Max Protein. It has 30 grams of protein. The Slim Fast High Protein and the Premier Clear both have 20 grams. So those last two, you would drink three of those a day. You could also use a protein shake or a protein powder if you'd like to. With the protein powders, you'd follow that same criteria as well as making sure it has 20 grams of protein or more, less than 10 grams of carbohydrates. You can mix it with either a clear liquid that meets the other criteria or with skim milk, no more than six to eight ounces. In addition to your clear liquids and protein shakes, you'll also be taking vitamins and minerals for life. Ideally, for that first month, a chewable or liquid form would be best. After that, you can use more of your um, normal capsule pills. For the vitamin and minerals, you'll take two multivitamins a day, you'll take 250 milligrams of B12, 800 IUs of vitamin D, 1,000 milligrams of calcium citrate, and for iron, only um, for women who are still having a menstrual cycle, you'll take 325 milligrams of the sulfate elixir. So to get an idea of what this would all look like for those first two weeks before surgery and those first two weeks after surgery, you have an idea of a sample menu here. And so you can see throughout the day, we're doing um, small sips of water consistently throughout the day in addition to those protein shakes. Ideally, you'll drink one ounce every 10 minutes, ideally. Um, so taking small sips compared to taking gulps or chugging. Um, drink, drink, drink as much as you can. Dehydration is very common and we wanna avoid that risk from happening. You'll also make sure that we are um, avoiding straws because that can lead to air bubbles getting to the stomach. That can cause expansion. And making sure you're using room temperature liquids just based on tolerance. 
Sometimes those cold, really ice cold liquids or warm liquids might not be the best on your stomach after surgery. So after being on the liquid diet for two weeks prior to your surgery and two weeks after your surgery, you'll come back and see me and we'll start to advance your diet to include soft parade protein foods. Ideally, we're gonna do this through three to six small frequent meals per day. Keep in mind you've been on a liquid diet for basically a month by this point. Your stomach is very small, about the size of a banana, so you're gonna get full really quick. So for an idea for size, this is what two tablespoons of food looks like. This is raisins, we're not gonna necessarily eat raisins, but portion size. This is gonna get you full. So instead of eating a large portion, it's gonna be very small. You might take two or three bites of food and feel full from that. That's completely okay. Put it away, put it in the refrigerator, and you can come back to it a little later. This is not forever. Your portions will stay very small, but over time your stomach will stretch a little bit to where maybe your entire meal is about a half a cup portion. And then with that, that would have your protein, your vegetables, your starch later on, and would all be included in that portion size. So at this time, the things that we're gonna focus on will be the soft proteins, like your fat-free yogurt, fat-free cottage cheese. You could do a tuna, you could have beans, fat-free eggs, so egg whites or egg beaters. You could have lean ground beef, like 90% or higher, shredded chicken, and um, would also be approved. From there, we'll slowly advance your diet to include more of your non-starchy vegetables as well as your fruits. During this time, our protein goal stays the same, 60 grams of protein per day. Protein is the most important nutrient, we gotta make sure we get that first. And so we're making sure that you eat your protein, and then after that, you can have a little bit of vegetable or a little bit of fruit to go with it. Some of the fruits and vegetables that would be included during this time would consist of cooked vegetables that you can smash with a fork, including carrots, green beans, or cauliflower. For your fruit, you could have unsweetened applesauce, a cantaloupe, mango, honeydew, or peeled apples and peeled pears. Make sure you're introducing one food at a time after surgery taste buds could be altered a little bit from what they were prior to surgery, and so you might not tolerate the foods the exact same way as you did before. As you get further away from your surgery, you'll be able to advance your, your foods and the textures so where you're not necessarily doing soft and parade foods. This gives you an idea for a sample menu. You're eating five to six times a day, you're getting your, your protein first, vegetables and fruits with it, we're always eating protein in every meal and snack. Ideally, by this time, you shouldn't be on protein shakes daily. Maybe you're getting one every once in a while, but it shouldn't be a daily basis. You still are taking those vitamins and minerals that we talked about earlier, and you can also see that on, this, on the sample menu. Other things to keep in mind is we wanna make sure you're chewing your food at applesauce consistency. So chew, 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 you can't chew enough. If it doesn't feel like applesauce, do not swallow. That food can get stuck going down. Continue to make sure you are separating the food and beverage from each other, waiting about 30 minutes, and pay attention to your body. Stop at that very first sign of fullness. Don't worry if you only have two or three bites left on your plate. Don't make yourself eat those. Stop there so that way we don't stretch that stomach any more than it needs to be stretched. So now that you have an idea for what to expect before surgery and after surgery leading into the first three months, we're gonna talk about what you can do now. The surgery is a tool, it's not the solution. So we can't just rely on the surgery to fix our problems. And so ideally, right now, we wanna work on our goal of one to two pounds of weight loss per week through a combination of decreasing your calorie intake as well as increasing your physical activity. So some tips we can work on now for weight loss could include portion control. With portion control, we wanna make sure you're looking at the nutrition facts label that you can find on the back of all of your um, foods that come in a bag, a box, or a package of any sort. Looking at the serving size and going off of that portion for what you're gonna be eating. Um, ideally, you can either keep a food log or you can track your intake through MyFitnessPal or the Lose It app. Either way, if you can, bring it in with you to our appointments and that way we can use that moving forward. It helps keep you accountable and it helps me do a better job at helping you reach your goals. Other things we can work on is making sure you're evaluating your hunger. Before just going in and grabbing a handful of a food or eating a meal or grabbing a snack, ask yourself a few questions. Are you truly hungry? How's your mood today? Are you a little, a little angry, a little depressed? Maybe we're emotional eating, we wanna to try to avoid that. See how much water have you had to drink today? If you haven't had nearly enough water, that 64 ounces, then let's try to drink a bottle of water before going for the food. 
Other things we can work on would be paying attention to your body. So know the difference between what does your body tell you when you're full versus being very full. Ideally, we can stop eating at that first sign of fullness instead of, you know, just taking a couple more bites because we were raised to finish our plates. Follow the 20-20-20 rule. Ideally, we want to take 20 chews every time you take a bite, wait 20 seconds between every bite, and make your full meal last 20 minutes. It takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that you're full, and so if you can slow down when you're eating, then you'll have a better idea of what does it mean when you are truly full. Use smaller plates and utensils, just like we mentioned earlier, as far as your eyes play tricks on you, and when you see something that's smaller and more filling, it's gonna be much more satisfying than to see something that's a larger plate more empty. Smaller utensils will also help you to slow down when you're eating. It's just a nice little trick. Eat plenty of fiber. Fiber can be found in your fruits, your vegetables, whole grains, and beans. They're more filling, and it's gonna keep you full longer throughout the day, so it helps with the portion control. Keep all of your food in the kitchen, and so if you can, try not to take the food with you into the living room if you wanna watch TV or if you're reading a book, and that way we'll kinda of cut down on that snacking. Cook when you're not hungry. Same as you wouldn't go to the grocery store when you're hungry. And so if we can not cook during that time, then it will slow down on wanting to snack and to try your own food. And we'll cut down on all those samples or those extra calories you're getting that you don't think about. In addition to our eating habits, we also wanna increase our physical activity. Our goal is to get 150 minutes of cardio per week. So constant moving through either walking, bicycling, swimming, or dancing. If those are not options available to you, or if you need additional options or ideas, then we can talk about it at your first appointment. So another method for portion control, if you don't want to look at the nutrition facts label and portion it through the actual portion size, is using what's called the plate method. The idea here is that half of your plate should be covered in non-starchy vegetables. A quarter of the plate should be a lean protein, and a quarter of the plate should be your healthy carbohydrate. When you look at the, the serving sizes, Typically, we want to do about a full cup of non-starchy, three ounces or about the size of a deck of cards for your protein, and a half a cup for your healthy carbohydrate. Some examples of these would be non-starchy vegetables could include broccoli, green beans, zucchini, squash, cauliflower, beets, or asparagus. Your lean protein would be your, your, your chicken, your lean ground beef, 9% or higher, a loin or a round cut, fish, eggs with no fat, beans, and your low fat or fat-free dairy products. For your healthy carbohydrate, we wanna go with our starchy vegetables, so a half a cup of your corn, half a cup of peas, mashed potatoes or baked potato, or a half a cup of fruit of your choice. So I just wanna thank you for listening today, and I look forward to working with you to reach your goals.